Wow, today is a day that I think would never ever come because I've got something to tell you. And I think I was waiting for that day. Am I ever gonna say that, you know? And you know what I'm gonna say? I have finally found a version of a puff pastry that is easy to make, that uses only three ingredients and that can be ready to go in one hour. Unbelievable. I'm sure you don't believe me, right? It actually works, and this is exactly what we're gonna see in this video. So I'm sure you must be thinking, what on earth is that puff pastry? What is the catch? Is there a catch? Well, there is some sort of catch. Let's be realistic, puff pastry in one hour, very easy to make. You're not gonna get obviously the same as what you see in the baking world. And so when we talk about a puff pastry, the classic one in the baking world, to make king cakes, vanilla slice, that sort of thing, so you've got all these thousands of leaves, it raised really, really high. This is a type of puff pastry that is used predominantly in the baking world for sweet things. What we're going to do here is to use the puff pastry to use in the savory world. And that is in the charcuterie world, the small goods, the guys that are making pâtés, terrine, tourte, pitivier, pictures on the screen, these are the sort of things you're going to be able to make with that puff pastry. So what's the difference? Super easy to make, not complex at all, but it does not puff as much as the baking world one, okay? So you're not going to have these kind of fires and leaves. It's going to be just a little puff or just a few layers, but just enough to warrant its name as puff pastry. And I've tried it. It does not taste at all like a short crust. Because I'm sure you must be, oh, that must be some kind of short crust. No, no, no. It is actually the texture of a puff pastry. Tastes great, and it is super versatile. So now, let's see how to make it. And here we are. So I did told you this is easy to make. Ingredient-wise, it's crazy how simple that is. 75 milliliters of water, 250 grams of all-purpose flour, 200 grams of plain unsalted butter and a pinch of salt. I'll put all the equivalents in the video description. For the cookware, you can use any kind of large bowl. And then we're going to need a rolling pin, a bit of extra flour to put on the bench top, and that's it. To make the puff pastry, it's going to be extremely simple. We're going to use a large bowl, okay? I'm going to take all of the flour and I'm going to pass it through a sieve. It is a good practice to do, okay? So everything. Okay, the flour is in there. I'm gonna add my pinch of salt and dried product and make sure you wash your hands because we're gonna be working by hands. Now the butter has to be cold and it has to be cut in small cubes. All what we're gonna do here is to sprinkle the cubes of butter over the flour. So until here, as you can see, nothing complicated. I'm gonna be using my clean hands and all what I'm going to do here is to actually take pieces of butter and just incorporate it with flour a little bit. And you're going to see why after. And I'll show you my results. So you take a piece of butter like this, a bit of flour, and you, you do something like this, you see? So it kind of incorporates with the flour, but not totally. We're not going to be sending anything, okay? All right, I am done, and it is extremely important that you see this. This is my result. You see, I've got like flakes and little balls of butter in my flour, and it is not sanded. There's plenty of residual butter in here. And this is what is going to replace that big sheet of butter that you usually use for the puff pastry. So you don't want to go any further than this. When you're there, you're going to start to add some water. And same thing here, using your hands, we're going to start to form basically the bowl of dough. Okay, so as you can see, it starts together like this. I'm going to take more water, Up, everything in there, and I'm going to continue. Now, depending on the flour you use, you may need a little bit of more water, but I'll see how I go here. I haven't added any water when I'm working my dough bit by bit like this with the butter it starts to absorb everything and I've actually have my bowl of dough and this is done we're going to form a bowl and I'm going to put this on my bench 
So I've taken my dough out of the bowl. I've added a little bit of flour on here. And as you can see, all what I've done, I've flattened my, my bowl here, put it in a rectangle like this. And if you want thinner, you can. It doesn't matter because this is the shape we're going to need afterwards. I'm going to turn it around. There's a little bit of flour on my bench to make sure it doesn't stick. Nice and rectangle. I'm going to take a, a cling wrap, like a, a film. And all what we're going to do here is the resting time. So that only needs to rest for 30 minutes in the fridge. So I'm going to wrap this up and 30 minutes in the fridge. And there we are. So it's been 30 minutes. If you want, you can leave it longer. The only uh, thing we're after is that uh, the dough is a bit firm. So we have time to work with it because there's a lot of kind of folding to do. All what you're going to need, rolling pin. I've got my dough. A little bit of flour. And I'm using here a tape measure. You'll see why in a sec. Of course, you're going to need some space. And uh, this is like a stone bench. Uh, it's better because it's going to keep, keep the cold. So this is going to be my working area. So what you do, you always put some flour, the tiniest amounts, but we're going to repeat that process. You want to have some flour on your bench to make sure it doesn't stick when you're going to be rolling. So why exactly do I have this thing here, a tape measure? Because there is a guideline, a reference when it comes to the length and the width of the, the dough because we're going to have to fold it. So it has to be maximum 15 centimeters wide, which is here about six inches. And on a length of about 45 centimeters, which is about 17 inches and three quarter kind of thing. Okay, so you need to keep this in mind. You can have a tape measure to make sure. So all what you're going to do here, you start with a rectangle and we're going to want to keep that rectangle shape. And it's going to be a long stretch like this. So we're going to take our rolling pin and we're going to start to work the dough in one way only. So you see, we're just going to be expanding our dough like this very slowly. You don't need to go fast. Turn it around. You can use, if you want, uh, one of these uh, brush, pastry brush. And all what we're going to do here is to basically roll that until we reach that length. So you see now it's much larger. So I, just to show you, now I've got what, 33 centimeters, 13 inches already. And this is now already here at 15 centimeters or 6 inches. So this is how wide it has to be maximum. You don't want to go any further than that. And I'm going to just keep on rolling. I'm going to turn that around, a bit of flour. And I'm going to roll again to extend this to the 45 centimeter. That's all it is. OK, so this is what it looks like when you've got about 15 centimeters wide by 45 long. You've got a very, very long rectangle. I'm going to use here a brush to remove the excess of flour. And I want to bring your attention here to these kind of patterns. You see, on the dough, it's like it's marbled. And this is the butter, these flakes of butter, these balls of butter that starts to spread throughout the dough. And this is how it works. This is how the secret of that technique is. You have the butter already in the dough. And now all what you need to do basically is the famous Turning. The turning is quite simple. You need to fold your dough. So I'm going to take, I'm standing in front of my dough. So I'm here, I'm that way. I'm going to pull this toward me, but one third of the side. I'm using a brush. Okay. About one third, something like this. And then you're going to take the other bit and you're going to fold it over. And you need to make sure it kind of just make a little parcel like that. and you flatten it, okay? So you see the process? You first take the bit here, fold it there, and then the one that's towards you, you flap it over. Once you're here, basically, you just take the dough, take a bit of flour, and you turn it, so it was like this, you turn it like this, one quarter of a turn. And what we're gonna do here is exactly the same as we did before. I'm gonna take my rolling pin, I'm gonna flatten this, and I'm gently going to start my rolling again. If it gets too wide, what I'm doing is this. I'm using my hand like this. 
and just put it back in line. But for the beginning, slowly but surely, you're going to keep on rolling. Okay? And if it sticks, very important, a little bit of flour, always, and you continue. So I'm going to go on and make my, my length again, so 45 by 15. Okay, so here I am, same thing again, I've got the length 15 by 45, and what I'm going to do, exactly the same thing as I did before. I'm going to take that piece here, I'm going to pull it towards me, okay, make sure it's nice and rectangular, and I'm going to check if that just goes over like this, I think it's not exactly, so I'm going to pull a little bit more, take this, and again, I've got my parcel, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn it one quarter of the way. So I'm rotating it clockwise. And then from here, I'm going to do again another layer. Now, the amount of turn you, you do usually, after the third one, you're done. You don't have to go any further. But if you want, you can take it to extreme and just keep on going to have more layers. But it's not really necessary. Once again... I'm done, and this is basically the last turn that I've got here. So I'm just going to brush off the excess of flour. And one final time, I'm going to do exactly the same as before. I'm going to pull that bit here, remove the excess of flour, measure to make sure it's going to go nicely on here, and that's it. My puff pastry is now ready. We can Reserve it in the fridge for about 15 minutes just to let it firm a little bit and we are ready. This is how straightforward that pastry is. It's just plain amazing. If you want, you can even use it straight away. So when you use it, what you're going to be doing, basically, you're going to roll it not in a rectangle but whatever shape you want. Okay? It's just like a normal dough. And that's it. You're done. Would you look at this, we are done. I am not believing this, but this is a puff pastry that you can use to make all kinds of tart, torts, quiche-like things, sausage rolls. There's so many recipes you're gonna be able to do with that particular one. It's easy to make, less than an hour. You can keep it in the fridge until the next day. You can freeze it if you want. It is super versatile. The key point to remember, the size 15 by 45, make sure there's enough flour on your bench and on your dough. Brush the excess with the little paintbrush here and always fold and turn the same way. When you turn, if you start clockwise, you keep on going clockwise, clockwise. If you go the other way, you keep on going the other way. You don't do like clockwise, anti-clockwise. Otherwise, that's going to stuff up that kind of layering. Last word, this is not the same as the baking puff pastry. You're going to have a slight puff, not an amazing amount of layers, but it is still a puff pastry. It is not a short crust and I'm waiting for your pictures of what you're going to be trying with this because this is for me a revelation. I've been waiting for this for ages. Now, I'm not going to show you anything right now with that particular puff pastry because next week we're going to make a delicious tourte and which is called the jambon fromage tourte or jambon et fromage with a cheesy bechamel cheese all encased in two discs of puff pastry. It's going to be luscious, creamy, delicious. It's going to be like, wow. But I'll see you all next week for that recipe. And until then, have fun with that new puff pastry. Take care all. Bye-bye. Thank you.